Michael Whitlark, the the man. You are the <laughs> man. So six months ago, we didn't know each other, mm-hmm. and uh, short, uh, shortly thereafter, you joined Art Empowers Me when we launched. Yep. And tell us, tell us what you were doing six months ago with your art. Uh, well, it was sporadic, um, to say, to say the least. Uh, I, for probably maybe a year, year and a half, I had been kind of thinking about trying to sell my art. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, had a website up, um, and was doing, you know, shows in like coffee shops or restaurants or, you know, any, anywhere that I could get a show, but, Mm -hmm. um, I was probably selling, you know, one or two pieces every three or four months, you uh-huh. know, maybe, if uh-huh. I was lucky. Uh-huh. Um, I had had a website for about a year, right right at about a year when I first, um, you know, kind of came in contact with you. And I think that I had a tracker on there, and it was really rudimentary. I mean, it was like a, a page count ticker, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I had 140 page hits, and probably most of them were me checking my own <laughs> website, refreshing your website to see if anybody showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, up until that point, I I was uh, really not going anywhere fast. How I got so. through to Art Empowers Me through um, your Abundant Artist um, website, and I, I kind of was a, a random. I mean, I was just searching for how to sell art online. You know, I just I had no idea. I had no idea what I was doing, and um, you know, I, I had a website, but that was about all I had done. You know, I, I created a website and I put it up and I just thought that once you put it on the internet, it's going to magically <laughs> drop if it could sell art and I, overnight, you know, uh, I was you, just and gonna, the, you and hundreds of thousands of other artists. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So, um, you know, so I, I had a website and, and it hadn't taken me anywhere. I mean, like I said, I had nobody who even, hadn't even knew it existed, um, and even my family didn't look at my, my own <laughs> website. <laughs> they looked at it maybe day one when I launched, and after that, they didn't look anymore. So, uh, so I was, you know, trying to research on how to go about doing it, and I stumbled across, you know, um, your abundant artist. And then right when I came across you guys, you were launching Art Empowers Me, right? I mean, it was within a few days, I think, even, that that kind of happened. And, um, you know, I really felt like I was in a position where I really needed somebody to kind of help me figure out what I was doing. And, I, you know, I certainly wasn't doing it on my own. Sure. Um, so I was excited for the opportunity to really, you know, get involved with a group of people that, that had some experience and they were willing to be guidance and, you know, kind of help me along in the process. So Sure. Awesome. So once you joined the, the Art Empowers Me when we opened our doors and you started looking at the courses and everything, um, mm-hmm. what, was the, what were the first things that jumped out at you? Well, the first thing absolutely was my website. I mean, that was a big drive for me coming was trying to figure out what was wrong with my website, why it wasn't working, how to bring people to it, um, and how to how to market myself as an artist. You know, and, and at that point, I didn't even really think of myself as an artist. You know, I was just more I was creating art and trying to sell it, and and my scope was very small. You know, what I was thinking about, you know, how, what I was projecting myself to be able to sell or what kind of money I was going to be able to make out of it or what, where I was going with it. It was very small. You know, I mean, at that point, like I said, I was selling one or two pieces every few months. So in no way was I thinking of myself as an artist. I was just trying to make money. <laughs> you know, the whole how to, how to market myself, I think, was kind of one of the big pushes. And, um, you know, there's lots of lessons about how to restructure. I mean, I, I totally stripped down my website and started over and uh, realized that I think almost everything about my website was wrong. <laughs> my original <laughs> website, uh, you know, just the way I had it laid out, and you know, what, one of the things I was thinking about this today when I was, you know, trying to think about what we were going to talk about. Um, one one of the things about my website was that I created it just as kind of a, a place to put pictures of my art, and I thought that was enough. You know, once I got my art on the internet, that's all it took, mm-hmm. and to have to think about it in terms of a website that people would visit and, and then thinking about how I go about looking at web pages and what draws me in or what deters me and, you know, like how many times am I willing to click before I see an image before I give up and move on and realize that my website was the worst, you know, worst case scenario of that, you know, you had to click this and this and then this and then it wasn't really even clear what you were looking at or, you know, so the whole, my whole website was just so clumsy. Um, so that was a huge, you know, part of the lessons for me was just figuring out 
what made my website run efficiently and what kind of things I needed to have in there and what was important and what wasn't important and needed to go away and things like that. So what about Art Empowers Me helped you figure that out? The lessons, um, the coaching calls is one of my favorite parts. You know, I love to be able to talk to somebody. I mean, it's one thing to read um, lessons and to kind of do your own research because, you know, there's a lot of times that I would have to kind of, because I, you know, I just didn't know anything about it. So it was, you know, I had to kind of do a lot of reading um, to figure out, you know, what I was doing wrong and what works and what doesn't work and whatnot. And so, um, but being able to talk to people and see other people in the same struggles and the same, going through the same things and asking the same kind of questions was really helpful for me too as well. Yeah. When you, I mean, you relaunched your website and everybody was like, whoa, that's a great looking website. Um, but you didn't immediately start selling stuff on your website. Instead, you immediately started selling stuff elsewhere. So how did that happen? Well, um, I felt like I knew that my website was going to be a part of the equation. You know, mm -hmm. selling art on my website was going to be a part of it. But to me, I felt like in my experience up to that point, you know, I had I had zero success with my website, mm -hmm. with my art. And so the only times that I ever sold art was when I met people in person. Um, mm -hmm. And they saw my work and bought it there, at, you know, on the spot. So for me, that was in my head, that was a big part of the equation was I knew I had to get my art out there and have people see it. And, um, and so that was, that's been a big push for me all along, um, getting myself into, you know, art and craft shows or fairs or street fairs or whatever. And then having my art always on display somewhere, whether it be, you know, a coffee shop, which I mean, I think is almost underrated um, you know, I mean, I've sold so many, so much work out of coffee shops and mm -hmm. restaurants. It's, you know, I, I never overlooked that as an opportunity. Um, and now I'm in kind of a small gallery, um, and I sell, I'm selling really well out of there, too, so that's really exciting. But to me, it was about getting my work out there um, in person. And then my um, newsletter, which I wouldn't have had going without Art Empowers Me, has been huge for selling art. Okay, in what way? Well, I, again, what, you know, when I said earlier, my, I had this really small scope for what my, what my art potential could have been, or my potential as an artist or a selling artist could be. Mm -hmm. And um, having a a newsletter just opens that up to there's all these people that are constantly in contact with you and constantly exposed to your work, mm -hmm. and that you know have become fans. I mean, I I, uh, and I met this girl um, who bought one of my pieces of work, and it was such an interesting experience from from start to finish. I sold it. I was in a coffee shop, and she emailed me and said she was interested in buying it. So we arranged a time to meet and. Um, you know, I, I went down there and we, I was going to switch it out so I would have a new piece to sell on the walls and give her the piece once I took it down. And when she showed up, she was in no way what I would have defined as the demographic I was shooting for. You know, I was thinking like, you know, 30s, 40s, married, family, house. I mean, that's kind of what I had in my head to spend a couple hundred dollars on a painting. Mm -hmm. And the girl walks in was like in her, you know, early 20s, a college student with an apartment buying this piece of art. And it uh -huh. just blew my mind that, you know, I wouldn't have even attempted to sell a piece of art to somebody in that situation, you know? Okay. And um, so she bought a piece of my art and we kind of um, have stayed in contact through my newsletter and every now and then she kind of responds, you know, makes a comment about one of my new pieces or whatever. And she was actually my first online sale just a few days ago. Okay. So she's become like a fan of mine, you know, where mm -hmm. she like buys more than one piece. And that was another thing that I never thought was possible was somebody buying more than one piece of my artwork and like following my journey as an artist and being a part of it and being excited about it and I mean that that blew me away just as much as anything else. That is so freaking cool like I just I love it I love it I love seeing that happen for you it's really cool. Every show I get like 10 to 20 maybe 30 new people on there and um, every now and then I get really I mean this is so exciting for me too I get just this random email that says you have a new subscriber and I have no idea who they are how they uh -huh. found out on the website they just stumbled across my website and now are a fan and that's that's exciting for me to you know feel like I'm reaching out beyond um, my you know boots on the ground kind of effort nice you know I was selling work and I knew that I was selling you know more work than I ever had um, and but I was also spending money on you know my website I was spending money on uh, fees for art shows or um, you know, some of the places that I was selling artwork out of had a commission. 
or supplies, you know, and I, I bought like a new easel because I was painting on this rickety uh, <laughs> um, drafting table that was just outdated. And so I bought a new easel, you know, so I was kind of, I was kind of doing investing back into my business or my art um, at the same time as making money. And so I didn't know exactly where that was, the, you know, whether I was losing money overall or getting money overall. And um, I was almost afraid to know because I, I, did, I you know, was so early in the process of, of marketing myself that I knew that I was going to be losing money a little bit here and there, and I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted, you know, I was at a point where I needed to start really looking at how much I was spending and how much I was making and where that was going to work out. So I, you know, went on, got this um, small business accounting program on the internet that was free, just on the. Um, you do it over the internet, and it turns out that I was making, you know, like close to a thousand dollars every month, consistently every month for the past four months. And this month, I'm, I think I'm on track to make a thousand dollars again. Nice uh, this month, and that, I mean, I, I'm so uh, so in shock. <laughs> I, mean, I never, I never would have thought. And you're you having know, a hard time, like yeah. you're having a hard time keeping up with your sales, right? Yeah, I mean, right now. Um, I, I just, I saw this is another thing that just totally blew me away was I, I was creating new art and this is something I wrote about on the forums too, but uh, I had sold a piece out of this mini gallery that I'm in and so I was painting a replacement piece to go, you know, to go and replace it with and uh, the lady emailed me and said, hey, there's a guy here that is really interested in your art but he wants a piece that has red in it and I went, well, I'm actually doing one right now that has red in it and I sent her a picture just to prove to her that I was working on it. Uh -huh. And um, she took the picture just from my phone. I mean, this crappy image, you know, from uh -huh. my iPhone. Showed it to him, and he said, "I love it. It's, it's sold." I mean, before I was even done with it. And um, so uh, I sold I these art, <laughs> and that, that was totally shocking. So, so I mean, I, I you know, it sat on my wall for a week and a half before it was dry, and I could bring it over there, and I walked it over there, and it was already sold. So now, and that, and the first thing that I thought when she told me, "Oh, it's it sold," I was like. You know, damn, I just, <laughs> now I have to <laughs> and then, you know, it kind of occurred to me, I was like, why am I upset? I just sold two pieces of art. I mean, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was kind of a funny, really up, quick up and down, you know, moment of, um, of emotion there. But, you know, again, so exciting for me. Right. So if you were meeting an artist who was trying to figure out how to, you know, make their career how to make their, how to turn their career, their art into a career. Um, what advice would you have for them? Um, well, you know, I think the, I mean, not to be a shameless plug, but the art empowers me, you know, form and you know, whether it's that specific one or another one, but a, a community of artists that are willing to help each other, give each other advice and in different stages and kind of be able to broaden your scope, you know, is really, I think is really important. You know I mean? Um, as you know, especially as an artist that maybe isn't comfortable with the internet and trying to sell on the internet, or doesn't really know how to start getting, just putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really important to, or it's beneficial anyway, to have a group of people that have been through it or that are um, in the same place and that can share ideas and you know help you make those first steps towards sharing your art and kind of marketing yourself. Because I mean, you know, unfortunately. Being an artist is much more than just painting or drawing or being, you know, creating art. It's definitely about marketing yourself. Um, yeah. And um, uh, and time. You know, you got to put it in time. You got to be willing to, you know, paint and and get away from creating and marketing yourself. I mean, that's so important. You know, and and a newsletter is so important. I mean, that was something that. Um, I hadn't even thought about, you know, I, mean, I, I was like, I should probably keep track of people that buy my work and I should probably keep track of people that I meet. But that was about as far as I ever thought about it. And mm -hmm. my newsletter has kind of been the foundation of my marketing myself. You know, that's where I keep in contact with, you know, anybody that I meet. And I, and I think it was you, uh, maybe in a lesson or maybe over a, one of our phone calls, mm -hmm. but you said that, um, it takes somebody three or four different interactions with your brand or your art before they'll make a purchase. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's just so true for me. I mean, I'll meet people. There was this one lady that I met and I met her so briefly that I don't really remember our specific interaction at an art fair. Mm -hmm. You know, 
she signed up for my newsletter, and I think she might have asked me one or two questions, but I don't, I don't remember her. She was just kind of lost in the crowd. Um, and then, like, you know, I keep track of when, um, when I meet someone on my newsletter. You know, you can group um, when you met them, where you met them, that kind of thing. And right. so, every, you know, every uh, time that I put in a new stack of names, I, you know, date it and where I met them so I can kind of keep track of that. Now, where do, what do you use to, for your newsletter? MailChimp. MailChimp, Okay. And I'm I'm in love with that program. I mean, it's great. It has so many analytics uh, attached to it, and and you know, like uh, you can group your your the names in the group, which is so great. I mean, being able to group the different names in different segments of your your whole list, because you know, when I meet a new group, usually I've sent out a newsletter just a few days before that to say, hey, I have a show coming up. You know, make sure to come out see me. And then I have a whole new stack of names. And I think it's so important to send out an immediate newsletter to those people mm-hmm. to refresh them of, you know, here's what you saw. Did you love anything? You know, here's, you know, just refresh them of what they saw and give them an opportunity to maybe buy something or maybe just put it back in their brain. Right. Um, and you don't want to spam your whole list again, you know, with, uh, you know, two days later. So you can email just that one small group and tell them, you know, oh, just... Here's my work again. Oh my gosh, Michael, you are like a pro email marketer. You're like, I know, a, prof- you're like right? a professional email marketer. But uh, oh, anyway, so I, I met this lady, um, and then like three months later, she emails me and says, you know, this really short email that was, "Is this piece still available?" And she mm-hmm. gave a really brief description of the piece, and I was like, I don't even know which one specifically she's talking about. So I was like, I think this is the piece. I vaguely remember this lady talking about this. Maybe. I'm not really sure. So I emailed her back an image of it and said, is this the piece you're talking about? Here's the dimensions. Here's the price. Um, and she emailed me back, and I don't remember exactly what her, you know, what she said, but it was kind of something on the lines of it, it was too expensive for her. Mm-hmm. And so I emailed her back and said, you know, I also sell prints. You know, here's the different print sizes. Here's the different prices. And she never responded. And so I was like, well, you know, lost cause, whatever. You know, I just... Just trying to keep the email going, but it is what it is. And then a month later, she emailed back and said, I want it and bought it. Nice. And it was like, you know, I, I had counted her off as a lost cause. I barely even remember, you know, her as a person, you know, and here she is buying, you know, my artwork months after she had seen it. And I mean, the only reason that she was in contact with me was because of my newsletter, you know? Nice. So, nice. you know, and that newsletter has, has definitely been a huge part of my marketing strategy. So the title of this interview should be uh, Michael Whitlark, email professional email marketer. <laughs> that's right. That'll work. Awesome. Right on. So I think that's just about it for me. Do you do you have anything else that you want to add? Um, uh, I don't know. It's been exciting. You know, for me, it's been really, really exciting. And you know, almost. I mean, it's almost strange to think that you know I, I'm consistently selling artwork and that. You know, one 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 other thing that was really is really cool for me is that I've been uh, in a couple of different shows around Charlotte area where I live, and I've had my stuff on display in a couple places. And I went to one of my street fairs that I go to, and um, this guy walked by my booth, and uh, oh, I saw your stuff at such and such place. And this other couple walks by, goes, oh, wasn't your stuff just hanging over at so and such place? And you know, I mean, I feel like I'm actually becoming a part of the local art community and people recognize me mm-hmm. and recognize my work. And, um, you know, even like when my art is just hanging in a, in a gallery or a, not really a gallery, I'm not in any official galleries, but um, in a coffee shop or whatever, and they I mean, they see my work with me next to it and they had no idea it was me, but they recognize my artwork. I mean, that's, that is priceless to me. I mean, the, you know, the idea that... Um, I've, I've kind of outgrown myself almost a little bit, you know, I mean, it's, it's really a cool feeling to think that I'm a part of a local art community. I mean, that's something I've always kind of wanted, but really had no idea how to go about it and really didn't think it was possible that I could do that. So it was pretty exciting to be a part of that. Nice. So, yeah. Right on. Well, I'm going to, um, thank you very much for taking the time to, to talk to me today. Um, it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, me too. I'm glad I could be here. Cool.